Um, I'm just trying to decide if I'm comfortable even talking about this. This one's wife, gushing with beigeness. You can always rely upon this one's wife to provide you with a meaningless explanation, a pointless description. If you ask her about something, you're invariably treated to a word salad. You'll have some fridge magnet platitudes thrown in your direction. This is because she is so bland, because she actually doesn't have anything about her that she has to try and take by character trait acquisition from others and pass that off in order to make herself sound and look more interesting. The fact that she is empty on the inside, that she doesn't have any original thoughts. She engages in the Diana duplication. She copies things that Princess of Wales does. She takes quotations from other people and passes them off as her own. This is not uncommon for certain narcissists. But it all adds up to her being one of the dullest individuals that you could ever expect to meet. Because whenever she opens her mouth, she says a lot, but actually very little. Plenty of words spout because she loves to talk, but there's actually no substance to them. And she's at it again, as reported by Bridie Pearson Jones for the Daily Mail. This one's wife has said... She sees herself in the young girls she met in Nigeria and she hopes to empower them for the future. Speaking to People magazine, supine publication that was tasked, of course, with issuing her propaganda, the Duchess of Sussex, <clears throat> 42, said her quasi-royal tour was incredibly memorable and special and that the best souvenir to take with her was the memories she made. Fucking fascinating. Speaking of the young children she met on the trip, which included visits to two schools, this one's wife said, I saw myself in them. Fuck me, you are just so unimaginative. You said that when you were out there, and then you're being asked by People magazine about the trip, and what do you come up with again? I saw myself in them. Good Lord. The tedium of this woman. I'm sat here with a letter opener in my hand. It's shaped like a rifle at the hilt and then the blade. I'm minded just to stick it in my thigh to relieve the tedium of having to read the nonsense that this no mark spouts. She went on to state, I saw myself in them. I see the potential in all of these young girls, and by the way, in these young boys as well. Oh, kill me now and release me from this tsunami of beige. Good Lord. Who on earth has ever said about seeing potential in children, oh, only fucking millions of people. They're children. They're full of potential. It goes with the territory. They've yet to make their mark on the world. Thus, they have loads of potential. And this idiotic woman comes along spouting this complete nonsense. She also compared it to her children, Prince Archie, five, and Princess Lilibet, two. It's what we see in our own children, to give them that promise and excitement for their futures. Oh, good Lord, they ought to bottle up what she says and use it in hospitals to send people to sleep. It's, they'd save a fortune on anaesthetic. She explained that she's always reflected back on herself as a young girl. What the fuck does that mean? We know that you reflect back at other people what they want to see because you are of no substance and that's what narcissists do. But what on earth does that sentence mean? And then she went on to say, 
the type of inspiration she wanted to see in other women. The former actress added that it was really meaningful to travel and connect to people. Oh, for fuck's sake. Connect to people. Notice, has she told us anything about what she learned in relation to Nigeria? How many people live there? What are the major issues that they face? What did she learn about their culture? After all, she's 43% Nigerian. No, she doesn't convey any of that. You know, she didn't say, for instance, I recognise that Nigeria has a number of economic problems, which I add to as a consequence of me expecting them to fund my jolly. But I learned that there is a particular problem with this, that I'm looking forward to raising awareness in, to, in relation to these issues. I've already established a plan of action, five-point plan to address this. At least that would sound far better and would show some kind of action. But as we all know, this dimwit, this duchess of delusion, this woman of industrial beige, all she can trot out is, I saw myself in them. Potential. It's what we see in our own children. Reflected back on myself. Inspiration. Meaningful. Connect. Oh, fuck off, will you? Meanwhile, Harry said that these trips are about us being able to go out and go and focus on the things that mean so much to us. Adding that, being on the ground is what it's all about. Harry 39 added, there's only so much one can do over Zoom. He added that he looks forward to travelling with Archwell and other causes. Of course you do, because it fucking pays for it. You know what Africa means to me over the years. It's a very, very special place. And to be able to include Nigeria now in Invictus, I'm very happy. Well, at least that makes a bit more sense. That we know that Harry likes Africa and he's content there. And we also know that he wants to involve more people in Nigeria. But notice, that's the totality of you, what you get from this woman. You travel across the world to a country that you've never been to before. You spend three days there. You're ushered around like royalty. You go to Lagos, you go to Abuja. You go to these schools, you go to dinners. You're met by the military. You talk to people. And what do you come back with? Inspiration. Meaningful. Connect. That's it. Could you imagine you go on a holiday? And I don't mean just sitting around the pool and soaking up the sun. But one where you actually go and embrace the culture of where you go. When you come back, your friend says, So, tell me about the two weeks that you had in Peru. Oh... I reflected back on myself. Mmm, it was meaningful. Mmm, I connected to people. You fucking wouldn't say that, would you? You'd talk about what you explored. You'd describe it in rich detail. You'd talk about what it meant to you. You'd, you'd say, do you realise Peruvians do this, that, that? I went to this place, you should have seen it. But not this one's wife. Because she's not actually interested in Nigeria. She doesn't actually see Nigeria. It's what can Nigeria do for her. She doesn't want to know about Nigeria's problems. They're their problems. She's not going to do anything about it. It's all about, look at me and my costume changes. Look at me as I'm gurning with my rictus grin. The reason that she can't come out with anything meaningful to say is because, one, she's empty, two, she's dim, and three, her narcissism means that she simply has no interest in the environment around her because she's so self-absorbed. Now, some narcissists are much better at doing this, that they're able to take in their environment and talk about it. They're more charismatic. But with her, she's so bland and so self-absorbed, she might as well have spent her time flying in, spending three days in a hotel at the airport, watching Netflix, and then flew back again for all of the absorption of Nigeria that she's engaged in. It's summed up in this beige tsunami that she's issued. She just gushes with beigeness, and it's all because of her self-absorption and emptiness as a narcissist. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.